Today we will be making a first full orbit in KSP2 for science update. That's right. And we will be showing also the build process. We will be showing a little bit of the launch, orbital ascent and everything else. So let's get right into the thing, meat of things. We start our journey in the mission control where we our task is to orbit Kerbin 4, a total reward of 75 science. Our good old friend Dr. Terry Kerman is telling us the whole background and all shebang and I figured I'd skip a bit because, well, we are in a rush, we need to get to the science. And as an extra bonus we have the buoyancy test, which means that we should be landing in the body of water. So from the previous mission, which we did, if you didn't check the previous episode, I'm going to paste in the links below. We have 183 science and we have, we will be unlocking orbital rocketry. Then I'm thinking I'm going to go probably with probes because probes I really need because uh, those will be going further than anything else. Then we have struts. Struts are kind of important because when it comes to struts, we do want our rocket not to wobble too much. Then I'm thinking moon landing because that is kind of important because of the large tanks and the landing the legs a little bit later. And that leaves us with 33 science so we can only grab a couple of uh, beginner nodes. And I'm thinking introductory construction because that will give us some decouplers and it will also give us launch clamps which are highly important. And then for the last one I thought specialized decoupling. Alright, getting into the building meat of things. We're gonna build the the regular you know ascent vehicle and that includes the science junior parachutes capsule drogue shoots obviously and we're gonna take the another radial shoot because last landing didn't end up so well it really hit down and completely destroyed the science junior losing us a little bit of science so uh, all right, now that we're gonna put a decoupler engine and of course we're gonna take the terrier engine because that one is highly efficient and in terms of uh, going into the orbit it has low thrust but very high delta V. Then we're gonna be taking the solar panels and obviously what you're seeing is we are doing a really accelerated build because I don't want to waste your or my time either. So there we go, antenna to, for transmitting things. Then if we go we're gonna be placing the SAS module so that we can turn and control our rocket above. I was actually thinking to put these small landing legs because I thought it would be kind of cool that we land on Kerbin if we get to uh, land landing. Then we're talking about the ascent stage. This will be the stage that will be hopefully circularizing. We do need a little bit more of delta V. So if we look, the total delta V is 2.6. That's not good enough. I think we need a bit more. But then again, I'm thinking we're going to be placing this and can this lift? Now it's thrust weight 1.24 and that's for vacuum. So that's not good enough. What I'm thinking is we want to be placing this. And this is important because then we can have a double decoupler. So we can at the bottom have two swivels. You know what they say, two swivels are better than one. However, what worries me is that 1.24, now I'm looking, Kerbin Vag, that's 1.55, that's 3.7 thousand delta V. Okay, now let's see, vacuum, vacuum, let's just qu quickly correct the stages and then we're going to be placing some wings, or winglets, yes, those seem to be working quite nicely, good just to check to see that everything is okay and uh, we're going to be placing the launch clamps which are going to be launching this assembly onwards that being said i do want to pack struts because struts will make the rocket solid all right just checking if there's anything else let's bring the rocket a bit more down it's 3.7 kilometers per second which should be just enough for us to reach orbit so i'm kind of thinking that should be more than enough and i'm just making sure that i bring this thing down as we damn well shoot, oh, a little bit too, yeah. now it looks nicely aligned. So we're gonna save that ship and we're gonna be ready for the launch. To me, this looks good and rather than Valentina, I'm gonna select Team C Kerman because Valentina sneaks every single time. So now if we go into engineer's report, it's missing RCS, Kerman vacuum, no, I don't want vacuum, I want atmospheric. And then we see that it's 1.3 kilometers per, 1.3 thrust to weight. So if we put lace it like this, it's 1.5 with the, with the delta V still being the same. I think this will actually work. All right, let's save that and overwrite and let's go. Okay. Okay. 
our launch is getting ready and we have some science spending so I'm gonna need to press the science as well but let's first hit the launch there we go and decoupling the boosters so you will notice that I didn't have launch clamps on my first stage because well the rocket engines do need a little bit to spool up and we press that almighty research button to get some extra science Due to you already seeing this launch a couple of times, I have accelerated this for your benefit so that you can really enjoy and, you know, enjoy the launch and see it a little bit accelerated. After all, we don't need to go through one-time acceleration and this dragging on forever. At least let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, we are on the second stage and that second stage should be just enough to put us in the very nice path hopefully getting us out of the atmosphere and in a good position to start accelerating so i'm going for the apoapsis of let's say 100 ish for those of you that might be seeing it for the first time well i don't know welcome to ksp2 for science by the way my feelings about the ksp2 now, finally, with the Force Science update, KSP2 ha has given me a reason to play. While I do love the sandbox of the KSP2 that was before, it was... Um, I didn't feel the need to explore. I didn't have a carrot to run after, and the progression with the Science Tech Tree and Gathering it has always been a big carrot for me, so once that this was in-game, I'm really happy to play it, and I'm going to be playing a lot of it, just so you know. Uh, let me know what your opinions are. I mean, uh, now by now the game has already launched and hopefully you guys have uh, had a chance to play it a little bit. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like the update? Do you feel it's like as good as it could have been? I'm really liking it so far. I've been playing it only, this is like, what now, the third episode. So I didn't get very far, but so far I'm enjoying it. And it's really beautiful. It's really performant. It really looks good. So, those are my kind of thoughts, at least for now. Will, will it stay that way? Well, gee gosh, I hope so. There are, the game is not perfect, it has some small technical glitches, but it's much more playable than it was at the time of the launch, or even with at 0.150, so that's at least my thought. Anyway, we are 5 seconds from the burn for the orbital insertion and that one is going to take 1.1 kilo meter per second delta V. We have Tim C. Kerman burning at... This is the swivel engine. Swivel engine isn't exactly vacuum optimized, but the next one is. So, there we go. Let's press the staging and this one... Yeah, this one is. This one is actually very, very vacuum optimized and it looks great so that being said we have roughly one or 700 meters per second to burn off i would really like that this required delta v got an update so that it would go down as you are flying i do think still to me it looks like a bug because this red is me growing up meaning that it's like no fuel but then again Science reward available. Return to mission control to submit mission brief because we have reached orbit, ladies and gentlemen. 99 by 88. Tim, are you excited? How do you feel, buddy? So, as you can see in the mission tracker, orbit Kerbin, we have a check on that. So, that's definitely good. And now, we ha all we have to... EVA disabled due to an obstacle. Which obstacle, per se, are you referring to, good sir? Hmm. I don't see an obstacle, but... Okay, I guess. Okay, so speaking of that, uh, let's now go and check out how we're going to do the buoyancy test, because that one is the secondary mission, which means we should be aiming to land in the body of water on Kerbin. Take your pick, take your place. We have plenty of Delta V, 587, which is more than enough to deorbit us. So I'm going to accelerate time a little bit. Yeah, part ineffective lack of stellar exposure. Of course it is, because we are in the shade be behind Kerbin. But um, all in all, the game feels really good and playable, and it looks beautiful. I must say, I have almost forgotten how KSP2 how lo beautiful KSP2 looks. I love playing KSP1 with all the visual mods, but really, KSP2 is something which I'm hoping to play a lot more. Alright, so we do have a retro burn and we are burning just to make sure there's our impact point somewhere around that. 
Obviously, it's not going to be that, but it's going to be close to it. So, yeah. All right. Oh, look at this beautiful sunrise. I mean, the lighting, the feels. Oof. Ah, KSP2 people. Loving it. Yeah. All right. So, now what we got to do is we got to do where we are going to go and accelerate time a little bit on the ascent because I think now it should be the time where we should be slowly entering into the atmosphere and you're going to see the re-atmospheric heating effects. Yeah, and let's see if our landing legs will survive because that has been a little bit something that I didn't think about. Before here, there was no consequence, before the 0 0.200, there were no consequences in terms of returning back to Kerbin. There was no heating, nothing could get destroyed. I guess this would be an ultimate test of these systems. All right, so we are at 65 kilometers altitude. We are going to slowly turn and go downwards. So 64. I think I'm going to stage now. Yes, beautiful. Look at this. Such smooth, such smoothing, such frame rate. It looks gorgeous. I mean, yeah, I'm really ready to play some more KSP2. And guys, I do think that KSP2 is by far the most important update that KSP2, sorry, the, the for science is the most important update that KSP2 will be getting for a while. I don't know if it's colonies included or stuff. I know that other people are very excited, but for me, this will actually make me to make me play KSP too. Oh, look at this heating effects. Obviously not perfect, but they look kind of wonky. Okay, let's see if our craft will survive. Come on. Okay, those heating meters are getting dangerously. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that answers that my question. So I guess those parts didn't survive, but I'm kind of feels weird. My shoot safety says that it's now safety to run with the drogue shoot. Uh, are you sure? Because I have a feeling if I ran the drogue shoot, things would go very bad very quickly. We do have our science junior here as well. Okay, we fired up the drogue shoot at some 500 kilometers, uh, 500 meters per second, which I think is good enough. And uh, by the way, you are seeing accent also accelerated two and a half times, just in case you were wondering. I figured I didn't want to get drag you guys too long when it comes to, you know, re-entry and all that jazz. And that's uh, the kind of the format which I think I'm going to stick to. The, the parts that you guys are more familiar, I'm going to accelerate, while the new stuff is going to be, you know, one time time acceleration. Alright, so now let's see the buoyancy test. I'm pretty sure that the heat shield will, won't help with the buoyancy, but let's see. Land pod in the body of water on Kerbin. Come on. Doing it. Alright, and apparently there is some science to be collected. So we're gonna press that one, okie doke, and the buoyancy test fulfilled, which means we should be going back to the mission control to grab that wonderful science. But by the way, Team C. Kerman, you wanna exit and take a swim, take some samples perhaps? Can you exit? You can exit, okay. Then we, what do we say, run surface survey? Yes, run crew observations, there we go. Okay, I don't know if he collected any science, to be honest. But we're going to be cramming him inside and let's go back to the KSC. So, how much did we get? We did get 75 science here. And there you are, magnificent. We got to celebrate. Yeah, sure. Mission completed. Establish an orbit around Kerbin with an apoapsis less than 300 km. Beautiful. Buoyancy test. We're going to get the reward from that one. And as you can already tell, the next primary mission is going to be Moon or Bust. Oh, that's going to be fun. All right, so we got like the science here. And in the next one, we'll be taking it to the moon. How? I have no idea, but it's going to be fun.